for love. An intentional pause for reflection and connection. Selah. Content-rich dialogue and discussions. Selah. Pray and worship together. Selah. Living the way. Selah. Hey everybody, welcome to Selah. This is our intentional time to pause from the regular rhythm of church and worship to connect with God and with each other. If this is your first time doing Selah, we are glad you joined us. If you are a regular participant, thanks for joining us again. Can you believe it? It's August and this summer we are empowering you in your personal spirituality by helping you learn your spiritual pathway, which is the natural way you relate to God. We hope you have been enlightened and even challenged to go deeper into how you are uniquely shaped and created to worship God all week. Last month, we discussed the spiritual pathways of ascetics and contemplation. This week, we are discussing activists and caregivers. As we get ready to hear our teaching, we want you to consider a few discussion questions. Number one, what do you think of when you hear the word activist? Number two, what makes someone an activist? Number three, who comes to mind when you think caregiver? Number four, share a time that you were a caregiver or witnessed a caregiver. Go ahead and pause with the questions on the screen, talk about it in your groups, and come back for our teaching moment. Imagine an elderly woman. She had worked all her life, born two boys and a girl. Her kids had kids, and at this time in her senior years, it was time to sit back in a rocking chair, enjoy sunsets, and serve freshly baked cookies and cold milk to the grandkids. Instead, she's forced to work outside in the scorching sun. Her job is to grease an enormous moving granite stone to make it easier for it to move snugly against another. One day, as she's carrying out her duty, her dangling corded belt got caught under the stone being pushed by scores of men. Despite her cries for them to stop, the taskmasters kept it moving, knowing she would be crushed. A young friend ran and begged mercy from the highest authority within sight. Prince Moses followed her back, freed the elderly woman, and then granted her and her people a day of rest and abundance of grain. And cut. Cecil B. DeMille seemed satisfied with that scene for his 1956 movie, The Ten Commandments. The characters were real. The scenario, plausible. The lead, heroic. We all love heroes. Heroes overcome challenges and stand up for others. Heroes offer safety and protection to those who need it. Heroes speak against injustice and don't back down to the bullies. The weak have a listening ear and a louder voice speaking on their behalf. Today's sacred pathways are activists and caregivers. Activists love God by standing up for what is right and fair. Activists feel closer to God as they confront evil and defend the vulnerable. This is because seeking justice is not just an American value we are reminded of each time we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Seeking what is right and confronting injustice is an attribute of God. Micah 6, 8 records the words, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? David, a psalmist, reminds us to seek peace and pursue it. Learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, plead the widow, Isaiah 1 verse 17 says. Now, these are not passive words. They are calls to action. They are not leaving things to hope or chance. They are words of confrontation. Activism can take the form of social reform or to confront error and evil. 
And writers, preachers, politicians, academics, artists, and homemakers can all be activists, faithful in their own sphere to stand up for the truth. Now, some years ago, America had experienced another tragic school shooting that rattled the nation once again. Several took to the streets in their local communities for change, while many made the journey to Washington, D.C. to hold a rally and demand a difference. Emma Gonzalez, an inspiring survivor of the Parkland school shooting, boldly proclaimed, It's time for action. The time for thoughts and prayers is over. It's time for action. To act and to move is to express the love of God and love to God and his people. In a surprising conversation, the chaplain of the school where I worked expressed that he didn't think it was our role to get involved in politics. But politics involves people, how people live fairly and making sure things are done justly. Author Brene Brown explains that people often silence themselves or agree to disagree without fully exploring the actual nature of the disagreement for the sake of protecting our relationship and maintaining connection. But Jeremiah 29 verse 7 says, And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. Now, English uses the word peace, but the Hebrew word is shalom. Seek the shalom of the city, meaning seek the completeness, soundness, welfare, safety, health, prosperity, quiet, tranquility, contentment, peace with God and friendship with others of the city you are in. So your desire for justice and to stand up as an activist for those who need is not just a personality thing, it's a God thing. It's a way to connect with him and to be a reflection of his love. So some spiritual practices include supporting just causes with time, action, and financial support, providing for the poor, needy, and oppressed through the means available to you, refusing to buy products of companies that take advantage of the poor, walking through housing projects and government facilities in places of need, fear, conflict, and decision-making, blessing the rooms and praying for the activities and people that gather there. And none of these spiritual practices would be possible without a caring heart. Moses, Prince of Egypt, his character is further revealed in scripture where it records that he pleaded on behalf of his people and asked God to extend mercy even when the Israelites rebelled and did not deserve it. Caregivers express love to God by loving others. For caregivers, acts of mercy are a very practical way for them to show their love for God, but also to grow in their love for God. Caregivers may hear God more clearly when caring for someone more than even when they sit quietly in prayer. Caregivers have found that one of the most profound ways they can love God is to love others. For caregivers, giving care isn't a chore, but a form of worship. For you, the spiritual pathway of being both an activist and a caregiver may come naturally to you. When someone is both, they may visit someone in a hospital or nursing facility. They will listen to the sick, pray with them, and sing a couple of songs and read a passage of scripture. Just as easy as it is for them to do those things, they'll meet with the medical team and advocate for the patient, making sure that all the right questions are being asked and the best care options are being explored. Now, perhaps you may think that there is no way you could confront someone. The beautiful thing about all these pathways is that it recognizes and highlights every personality type and shows how we love and connect to God in different ways. Someone may be only a bold activist and someone else only a caregiver or both. No one is greater than the other. Now Jesus spoke of the caregiver saying, and if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. It may feel insignificant, but in the eyes of God, your tenderness and care to one is just as important and powerful as someone making a dynamic speech on behalf of many. Your personal compassion is an expression of God's heart. 
In 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Emily, a nurse in her mid-30s, was working tirelessly at a local hospital's intensive care unit when a devastating outbreak hit their town. Hospitals were overwhelmed and resources were stretched thin. And one elderly patient, Mr. Johnson, contracted COVID-19 and quickly deteriorated. His family lived out of state and couldn't travel due to the pandemic restrictions. Emily, despite being overworked and exhausted herself, took a special interest in Mr. Johnson's care. She noticed that he was alone and frightened, struggling to breathe without loved ones nearby. Emily made it her mission to provide Mr. Johnson not only with medical care, but also with companionship and emotional support. She spent extra time at his bedside, holding his hand, listening to his stories, and offering words of comfort. She even arranged video calls with his family so they could see him and speak to him during his final days. As Mr. Johnson's condition worsened, Emily made a remarkable decision. Knowing that his family couldn't be with him in his final moments, she volunteered to stay by his side. She held his hand, stroked his forehead, and whispered soothing words until he peacefully passed away. Emily's act of self-sacrifice went beyond her professional duties. She exemplified true compassion by providing comfort and dignity to someone who was facing the end of life alone during a challenging and isolating time for many. And her story touched many hearts of people who heard it, especially hearing of her kindness and empathy during this time of crisis. So however you relate to God and draw near to Him, He is fulfilling His promise. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Thank you for that wonderful teaching, Pastor Tiffany. Now, within your Sela group, we invite you to discuss with one another the teaching that was presented. Within your group, discuss the following questions. One, what point stood out to you from the teaching? Two, which aspect of the pathways resonates most with you? Three, what pathway do you have more questions about? Pause the video now, and if you choose, you may take a few minutes to journal your answers first and then share with your group. We hope that as you learned about the sacred pathways taught today, you were able to discover something new about your personal connection with God. Now, we challenge you to take another step forward with these challenges. Here are three challenges we have for you. Challenge one, address a pressing issue in your community. Think of a pressing issue in your community and make sure it's a specific issue that you and your group can focus in on. Once you've decided on the issue, list five practical steps your group can take to advocate and bring about change to this issue. Then, as a group, plan how you will achieve these steps in the next coming month. Also, take time to pray about the issue. Challenge two, share highs and lows. Have each group member share a high moment from their month and a low moment. Take the time to listen and understand each other's experiences. See how each member can help with each other's lows. By offering support and assistance, you can strengthen your group's bond and create a supportive community. Take time to also pray with each other. And challenge three, reach out and help someone. Think of another person you know who may need help. Set a reminder to reach out to this person next week and provide the help they may need. It could be a simple act of kindness or a more significant gesture. Now you can pause the video to complete these challenges. Sela is supported by your generous contributions. Right now, there's a QR code on the screen. When you grab your phone and open the link with your camera app, it will take you to two ways to share your tithe and offering. One, you may click on the website to take you to our website, revisionchurchatlanta.org give, or two, it'll bring you to adventistgiving.org. Thank you for your consistent giving that is making a difference all over the world. 
Thank you for being a part of Selah this month. We look forward to seeing you again next month. Bye.